Uh, yes, brother, your name, your profession, and the question. I'm Augustine. I currently completed university. And my question is, the explanation that Jesus did not die using the newest scenario to explain, to me, it doesn't sound so convincing because a lot of people explain it in a different way too. To mean the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus within that three day period. And besides, there are some quotations to that back said that Jesus died. And another question is if Muslims believe in the prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and the rest, because they also prophesy about the coming of the Messiah and the death of the Messiah. So if the Messiah did not die, then they told lies. The brother wants some information about the death and the rising of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And they prophesied the coming of the Messiah and they prophesied that the Messiah will die. I do agree with it. They prophesy the coming of the Messiah and they prophesy the Messiah will die. Every man has to die. Even the Quran says in Surah Maryam, chapter number 19, verse number 33, Peace be on me, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Say, the day that I was born, the day that I will die, the day that I shall be resurrected. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born, but Allah Almighty God raised him up alive in his second coming. He will come as an Ummah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In his second coming, he will come and he will die. Now, he is raised up alive. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 158, that Almighty God raised him up alive. Even the Christian believes he was raised. What I say, that if you read the Bible correctly, he was put on the cross, he did not die. He was put alive in the sepulcher. Then Almighty God raised him up alive. In his second coming, when he come, he will die. So he will come again not to bring a new message. He will come to testify to the Christians. He never told that you should worship me. But oh, Budullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, who is my Lord and your Lord. This is even mentioned in the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 116, that in the next life, in the year after, Jesus will tell, peace be upon him, Almighty God, he never told the Christians to worship him. But he said, oh, Budullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, who is my Lord and your Lord. Hope this terrifies brother. Yeah, but how did he describe his death? That he will bear our sins and things like that. Nowhere does it say. Nowhere does it say he will pay for the sins. This is the teachings of Paul. Not of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Point out a single verse of the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I will pay for the sin. It goes against the teachings of Ezekiel. I'm talking of the prophets, not Jesus. The old prophets. Old prophets, yeah, you like have to I understand. Say, yeah. If you read the Bible, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 18, verse number 20, the soul that sinned shall die. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. That means the father shall not bear the sins of the sons. The son shall not bear the sins of the father. Righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked turns, he shall not die. According to the Bible, sin cannot be inherited. Sin cannot be inherited. Nowhere did Jesus ever say that he will die for the sin of humankind. That means that portion of the Bible which says that is not correct. We are here to follow the teachings of Christ, not of the other people. You know, there's the Old Testament, New Testament. In the New Testament, out of 27 books, 13 books have been written by St. Paul. Now, St. Paul wasn't even an apostle of Jesus. He's a self-appointed apostle. So what you're following today is the Pauline Christianity, not what was taught by Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I do not believe in St. Paul. I believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. I don't want to believe in the teachings of St. Paul. Is it clear? Yeah. You have to believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Okay. Do you believe there's one God? I'm not done, please. You're not? Yeah. Do you believe Jesus is God? There's, there's still something you need to clear here for me, please. No, but do you believe in Jesus as God or not? According to the Bible, it says so. Where does it say? 
point out a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me, I will accept Christianity. Not Jesus, who said it? If somebody else says, what does it make a difference? When Jesus himself did not say, you know when I give lecture in India, many of the Hindus, they touch my feet and call me God. Do I become God? No. You know, because I quote the Hindu scriptures, you know how I quote the Bible. Some of the Hindus touch my feet and they say, Tum Bhagwane. Does it make me God? No. Same way somebody but else says Jesus is God, it doesn't make him God. Brother, do you believe Jesus is God? Peace be upon him. And about the Holy Spirit too. Brother, do you believe Jesus is God? Yes. You believe he's God? Yeah. Still Where did he say he was God? Church says. Yet to find quotations on that. Sorry? I don't memorize the quotations of it. But you know that it is mentioned in the Bible? Yes. Where? You do one thing, let the other people ask you a question. By the time you search, you search in the index, where does Jesus say you God? You know there's an index. If you don't know, you look in the index or look in the... But my question is not about Jesus being God. Sorry? My question is not about Jesus being God or not. No, it's my question to you. You ask me so many questions, now I'm asking you one question. Do you believe Jesus? It's not your question, it's my question. Because I love you, brother. Yeah. I love you. I was told to come and ask questions, not to lecture, so I came with questions. No, you can ask questions, very good. Yeah. But even I'm asking you one question. I can ask you or not? Yes or no? After I finish mine. Okay, how many questions do you have more? One. Okay, yes brother, one more. And it's about the Holy Spirit. What's your question about Holy Spirit? John 14, verse 26. It says emphatically that the Comforter is the, uh, the Holy Spirit. But if it says that, that means there is a contradiction. You read in your Bible, open your Bible, Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is explained for you that I go away. For if I go not, then the Comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him? If it refers to the Comforter, the Comforter was early before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came. I told that earlier, the Holy Spirit was there in the womb of Elizabeth. Brother, the Holy Spirit was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was being baptized. It's mentioned in the Gospel. So surely, it cannot refer to the Holy Spirit. That means there's a contradiction in the Bible. Like how I told you in my lecture, Jesus, peace be upon him, says that John the Baptist is the Elias. When they ask John the Baptist, art thou Elias? He says, no. There's a contradiction. Who's right, who's wrong? You have to solve the problem. Because I do not consider the Bible to be the word of God. You consider it to be the word of God. So you have to solve that problem. Because you quoted that John to explain. That's why I'm also trying to. Because no, I'm quoting John, chapter yeah. 14, verse number 16. John, chapter 15, verse 26. John, chapter 16, verse and number 7. The, chap All is in context only. Chapter 14, verse 16, also the description it gives. It says it will abide with us forever. Correct. But Muhammad never abided with us forever. He is abiding yeah. with us forever. He died. This is the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. This is the revelation which he got the Quran. And he's saying the Hadith. It's abiding with the human being forever. No one can change the Quran. The Injil has been changed, not the Quran. That means after Prophet Muhammad, no other messenger will come. Where is the Holy Spirit? I don't know where is the Holy Spirit. Brother, where is the Holy Spirit? Brother, where is the Holy Spirit? The verse 17 says. No, no, brother, I'm asking you, where is the Holy Spirit? The verse 17 is giving the answer. Verse number? 17. The Spirit of truth, whom the world Chapter number which? Visit. Chapter 14, verse yes. 17. What does it say? The Spirit of whom the world cannot receive, because neither sees him nor knows him. The okay. word... Neither sees him nor knows him. Who? The split, spirit of truth that the Bible was talking about. So, what does it mean? 
That's what, what does it mean? That you explain to me. I don't. I don't get it. I've already explained to you in my lecture. You don't want to believe in my explanation. What can I do? I'm giving you the explanation, but you remember the explanation of the church, which is not matching with the Bible. So what am I to do? This comforter in Greek is translated from parakletos. The actual meaning of parakletos is a good friend and advocate. If they say comforter, I've got no problem. But the original word is parakletos, meaning the one who praises. If you go to the original manuscript, Greek and Aramaic word here is perikletos, meaning one who praises. If you translate into Arabic, it means Ahmad. I told in my lecture, it's talking about the one who praises. That's another name of Prophet Muhammad. Hope that answers the question.